Welcome to Never Dull Moment. I am Greg Blythe, and this is a long anticipated video for you from me. Um, I'm very nervous about introducing you into Japanese natural stones. The first thing I want to let you know for those of you who are watching the Japanese natural stone community out there is very particular. If you're watching, my goal is not to offend you and to do everything as right as possible, and that's why it's taken more than a year to even think about shooting this video. Uh, if you look at the title, it says Japanese natural stones down the rabbit hole. Well, welcome to the deepest, darkest, longest journey of a rabbit hole you'll ever have. And this is literally just the introduction and you're going to be here a while. There's so much information to know. There's so much information for you to learn as you use these and the uh, experience is not cheap. So what we're going to do, and just so you know, just so where it's understood, yes, I have a cheat sheet. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pretend that I am some expert at saying all the different uh, words that we have out there. I will pronounce things improperly. Please do not tear me apart in the comments. I'm doing my best to make this particular information available to a new crowd. Okay? There are several forums on Facebook that you can join. I am a member and I watch from afar. Um, the people have been very nice. And I will let you know they are around the world. And um, when you ask, they are there. They want you to know. Okay? So, Japanese natural stones. So, first off, these are natural. That means God made this. The earth came together. Mountains slammed into each other. And the, as the earth compressed, we have layers and layers and layers of rock. And in the mountains of Japan, they decided to cut into that mountain and ex excavate part of it for you. And that's what we have here today. So when they go into that mountain, there are layers and layers and layers of earth. And those layers are represented at the deeper you go in the earth, the harder the rock. Each mine has its own name. So each stone that is represented has a name. The name is represented in the name of the stone by the mine, the layer, that it was cut from from the mine. They also use the word strata instead of layer. And then you also have the and other words after that, which would be the color or pattern that is going to be available on the stone. So when you see the different names, like and again, I'm going to butcher some of these. So I am I am sorry. Not to, but yeah. yeah. So I'll I'll say one that I know I can say. So we have the Nakayama Tomei Nasiji. We have the Nakayama Kaitia Tome. So I can say some of those names, but when you see a one like Marioyama Tamagorio Suita Sun Sunashi, so, someone else is just going to be a little bit better than, than saying that to me. So let's get into, again, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on with the stones. So we have a lineup for you. And what I've done is I have put them down in what I believe to be representation of hardness, not necessarily a representation of price, but more of a representation of like how they would be used in a progression. So if you are a synthetic stone user and you are a knife sharpener, I'm not referring to polishers, I'm referring to knife sharpener, you, we think of grit. And grit is not something that applies to this. I, I'm able to give you ranges, but let's understand a synthetic stone is an abrasive with an adhesive mixed together, poured into a mold. We know the size of the particles of the abrasive. We are aware of the adhesive. We get a constant product constantly being made. We're able to purchase it, talk about it, tell someone, and they can get the same experience. That is not the case with this. So, as time and earth and pressure have created these, we have particles of sand and rock that are pressed together. It's just pressure holding this together. Okay, so in that pressure creates a stone and there can be odd shaped rocks that are in those. And we, you know, those are imperfections that would be in that, in that stone. And, you know, when they cut a stone and you look at the stone, you're looking to see if there's an imperfection because when you go to rub a tool or a knife across that stone to sharpen it, you don't want like an odd shaped rock leaving unusual scratch marks. But again, this is the problem with nature, right? Like 
So over time, sand, rocks pressed together create different stones. You see that they're different sizes. They come in different sizes. I would tell you that this very large stone is probably bigger than your average stone. Um, if you were to purchase some of the more expensive stones at this size, you have broken for most people the bank. I would tell you that a nice finishing stone at this size could run you $2,000 and up. This particular stone was just some hundreds of dollars because it is a, a, a lower end. So a really nice stone, but a lower end stone. I would tell you that this particular stone is a, probably your average size. This is a good looking stone. Um, I got this stone, stone from my friend Jonathan. He is a very, an extremely good purveyor of stones. He sells them. A lot of these stones were purchased from him. Um, this is a good looking stone. I would tell you that this particular stone is a good representation of, um, of how big a stone should come if it's like a full size stone, okay? And then you'll also see these odd shaped stones that come in different thicknesses. So they might be uh, shorter in thickness, they might be shorter in length, and then they might even have like chunks missing from the edge. Okay, and those are honestly, if you, it's kind of like buying a diamond, you know, um, if you get something that has a little bit of an, an oddness in that size, you're getting a little bit better of a deal because you don't get like the full stone. And then while my wife's panning over, I'll point at this stone and I'll call it something that these two stones in particular, I'll use the word Copa that starts with a K, O-P-P-A. And that means basically like part of a stone. Um, Copa means it's, copper. it's, huh? Uh, I, uh, I'm not going to call it a Copa. I mean, somebody can, yeah. Yeah. but, um, but, but notice from a regular size stone, it is broken, it is short, and it is thinner. So, awesome. so you know, if we're saying the word Copa, I believe the O is pronounced long in Japanese. <laughs> um, I believe it's, I you know, right. it's, I think it's like kind of similar, not the same, but similar to Spanish vowels. So, if you're willing to buy something in an odd shape, you can save a tremendous amount of money when it comes to buying natural stones. Um, which is why you see this as already collection because I am not made of the type of money that I can afford those higher end stones. <clears throat> Again, we have a lot to cover, so please stay with me. And it's just going to seem like I'm jumping around. It's like I'm not trying to. I'm trying to organize this. It's so much information. Um, what I also want to point out is another variance, which is this stone has been sealed. And you can tell of all the stones I have up here, this is the only one has been sealed. So the other stones are not sealed you can see that lacquer um, traditionally you would use what's called in, tra in traditional japan you would use what's called a cashew lacquer you can see that the shine ends underneath and you can tell me what you want michelle they, okay. that you have a microphone for a reason uh -huh. i mean we're not trying to be some secretive organization here just say honey I'm turn just it trying right to make left. it smooth man that's all i'm right. just saying but uh, okay. just tell yes, me you know like i mean you know mm -hmm. tell me what you need you'll see that some of the stones are stamped um i like it when they're stamped on the side because it means when i'm using the stone the stamp doesn't wash away a lot of the stones are stamped on top when you get them and it's unfortunate that the stamp goes away as you begin to use the stone. <sighs> it's like so much information. So I'm going to say a saying. My wife doesn't like the saying, but I'm going to say the saying because it's pertinent to the next thing I'm going to say. <laughs> Buying a Japanese natural stone, I equate to purchasing drugs. You give somebody a whole lot of money and you hope they come back with something good. And, and, and that is the case because when I just said that these come with stamps, believe it or not, you got to worry about fake stamps. I mean, that's a thing that people literally, you know, so you have to, making the same reference to one I just did, you have to know your guy. You have to know, know the guy you get your stones from. I mean, you know, he has to be, 
And what's really nice about the person that I use regularly is that they know what I have to know what I don't need. Because I'm like, hey, do I need these? Like, you don't need that stuff. He goes, that doesn't, you already have that. You, you don't. So he has saved me from purchasing a lot of things that were very shiny and pretty. Oh my gosh, you don't need that zone. You know, so I walked away per his advice. <coughs> so let's go ahead and just name some of these stones real quick and then we'll talk about grit. Okay, so at the lowest end of the spectrum, $35. You guys are used to seeing me use this stone every week when I dull the knives on the wars. if i if i'm doing whetstone wars and i need to dull the knife i'll grab this 35 dollar stone this amakusa is um generally generally brought to us by amonishi corporation they do uh, you know even though they make amazing um synthetic stones they do actually quarry out natural stones so and if you're thinking like oh wow that's great i can get into it for 35 dollars well that's where i did and uh yeah it's not good uh the 35 dollar stone it does what a $35 stone does. It's, it's very hard to work with. Um, it's a low end as far as like 1,000 to 1,200, 1200 grit. And, um, and you can set a bubble. It's not as aggressive as I think is a normal 1,000 grit. So let's talk about grit for a second. The reason you're gonna hear me say ranges with grit. <clears throat> These particle sizes are not round or square like what you're used to with the synthetic stone these are flakes these are particles that have been pressed over time i would like you to think of a puzzle piece like if you really got a box of puzzle pieces you know they're there there's a certain thickness and they're an odd size and so think of that as a flake over time pressing into the flake the fake flake can get thinner okay it doesn't really shrink the other way but it it, it rubs off but these being pressed the way that they're pressed, they really don't dish out at the speed of, say, a synthetic stone. The synthetic stone, the particles break away from the adhesive, and you see it in the slurry of the synthetic stone. These do create a slurry. Particles do get thinner. The flakes get thinner before they release, and that has a lot to do with the material that the earth was made from for those particles, as well as um, how hard the stone is, how much pressure is holding the flakes together. So I'm always going to give you a range because not all particles from every mine and every mine layer are the same size. <laughs> so every stone would have to be tested and give you a rating. And whenever you see these on websites, they do. They give you a rating. You know, so they, they give you a name of the mine. They give you the layer. The layer should help you to know that the, the top layers are softer. Softer tends to be more sharpening. It also gives a certain type of a finish. Harder, they're more difficult to use. They're difficult to get a slurry. We'll talk about the slurry in a minute. Um, and they, you tend to need more experience. They, and they did give a different finish on the knife if you're into polishing. The Bensui, I hope I said that right. Um, and the Natsuya. This is your next price point. This is around 100 to 200 depending on where you got it from. I don't believe I paid a lot for this. I believe it was 100, maybe 98, maybe a little bit more, but um, this is the bigger brother that's the better performer. If you, if you had the opportunity to buy either, my dog says hello. If you had the opportunity to buy either, go with the Natsuya. Um, obviously this big stone would last you for a long time. And now we're, now we're getting up into a mid grit. We're, we're closer to we're getting a little closer to 2000 grit. So somewhere between 1200 and 2000 grit. I would like to point out, these are not my favorite for setting a bevel. You know, if I didn't say it, I'll say it again. People who are into knife sharpening, people who are natural stone users, they will tell you, go get your synthetic and you're gonna set your bevel and then you're gonna go through your natural stones. It's not that you can't do it, you would do it down here on this end but you could definitely get it done faster if you go ahead and go with your synthetic. Okay, so a lot of people who are knife sharpening start with the synthetic and then they jump over here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna put on the screen the different words for the different types of uh, coarseness, but I'm gonna use English words to describe the different categories. So we have coarse, mid-grit, pre-finisher, finisher. Your finisher are the highest end. You're talking about those 
10,000, 12,000 and up grit. Your pre-finisher is that six to 8,000, even going up to the 10,000. That is your pre-finisher. You can be finished on the knife at a pre-finisher and never get a finisher. Okay, so pre-finishers are amazing and that would be like the highest you need to go. Your mid-grit is where you're gonna really, could you set a bevel? It's hard, you could, I've done it. Um, but this is really where you're kind of like getting out, getting your, um, you should have like, if you're a knife polisher, you should have gotten your unevenness out and your much coarser stones. And then you're going progressively through finer, I'll say grits for lack of a better word, your progression. So that way you can remove scratch marks and get the, the finish finer and finer and finer. I'm just telling you, this is a lot of information, right? For the, if you've still stuck so far in this video, congratulations, let's keep going. So once we get through this, now the words start to get a little bit more complicated. Uh, if my, whoever's watching, you're gonna know that uh, we have, I don't necessarily have these in the right order. So um, this is an Azu, and then this is the Mikawa Nagura. Now this easily could be in this order. I just got this. I haven't really had a chance to use it to know where it goes in my progression. So I'm gonna put this here as far as saying, this is rougher than that. This is two to 4,000, two to 3,000 grit. I have put a bevel on a knife with this and it has turned out nice. It is typically not used for that, but I have done that. This mine is closed. From what if I am serve if my memory serves me correct, this mine is closed. And if that's the case, I, if the story I remember correctly is right, during the winter months they had to the workers got cold and they had to seal that part of the like close that part of the mine to keep them warm. And unfortunately, accidents happened, and the because of the accidents happened to the people in the mine, the mine was eventually closed. And and what what, what you have out there is what you have out there. So, um, so I'm very fortunate to have one. They're not expensive. I don't know how many are out there. If that story is wrong, I apologize. I know that that's the story, but I'm pretty sure it, it adheres to this. <coughs> so again, we had those single words. We had the Amakusa, Bensui, Natsuya, Azu. Now we're getting into more words <laughs> over here. Okay, so this is just the two words, you know, the Makawa Nagura. And I'm going to say, like, a lot of times you'll see this word because um, people can break these off and use these as, as ways of, um, of making a slurry. So this is a smaller version of that. This is something that, um, that if I was using a stone and I needed to, like, get some slurry, I would use this scratch marks. This has got a rough texture to it. And this has got a rough texture to it. And I would grind on here with the water and particles would raise up and we would see an emulsification, you might say, on top. And it's helpful. So you'll see this word twice. You'll see it in the name of this and you'll see it in the name of these which are used to raise a slurry. So you'll see the name twice. Okay, so this particular one, let me find the name over here. Okay. So this is Otago Shiro Suita. Okay, and so remember the Shiro Suita, that is gonna be the, the, the layer and the Suita meaning like the hardest. I, I, I'm hoping that I've got this right for you guys. Like your brain will explode with the amount of information out there. The people who are experts on this, I applaud you. I mean, just the, this is their life's blood, and that's why I hope they don't rip me apart. At least I'm trying to introduce this to you guys out there. Um, I have not had a chance to use these two stones. I, I made it a point to mess with them the other day. I do not know exactly where they go in my lineup, which is I which is, brings me to another point. It sounds like I'm jumping all over the place, but it's in my brain. Let me say it. It is not uncommon to see people selling their stones, and when they're selling stones, it's not like, hey, I got a bad stone. It's like, no, I have more than one stone that grinds at that grit level. 
you know, you buy a stone and the, the finish of it is the same as three other stones. You don't need it. So it's to see like, oh, this guy's got, why is he selling it? It don't, don't necessarily be quite so suspect. Um, it's just that they've got a lot of, I personally believe I probably have three or four stones that are all the same finish that I don't need them. And it's going to take some experimenting to figure it out. But you can see definitely a lot of different sizes. This is a different purveyor. This one is a different purveyor for me. I'm going to put a link to that company. I had no problems getting it out of Japan. Um, I am in America. Their website did not set, accept uh, mailing to America. I had to talk to them privately. And they were like, no, we do it. It was a PayPal issue. But, um, but I, they had no problems. It got here immediately, efficiently. Um, so they have some bigger stones, but they have some other sizes. And if you're trying to spend some money, they have some affordable, but they have some higher end. Most of my stuff comes from my friend, Jonathan. He'll be the link that I, I have in the description. Most Jonathan is amazing. His packaging is amazing. Shipping a stone overseas. So it doesn't break, um, timely, efficient, always great. So we're going to go over here to this stone. This is the Ohira Tome. This is a very common stone you'll see on lots of sites, especially in America. This comes in a softness of three and up to a four, maybe a four and a half. And so let's pause right there and talk about hardness and softness. So I said the strata, the layer, the higher up, the softer the stone, the harder the stone, the bottom strata. Softer stones tend to be better for setting a bevel. They tend to be better for your earlier progressions. Um, when you're starting to like get a shine, <clears throat> um, you get a slurry very easily. Harder stones tend to be like, if you get like the ultra hard, which is a five, if you see the five, that's typically razor blades. If you're sharpening a knife on a five, your skill level should be the highest because it is so easy to get a scratch in the metal and you've just completely undone the polish that you were doing. So a lot of the fives are reserved for people who are sharpening straight razor, razor blades. Okay, so I'm not saying not to buy them, but you typically don't need something that's that hard. A four, 4.4.5 4 is the ultimate as far as like going there. Um, but you can find, so just because somebody has an, an Ohira Tome, uh, there are lots of sites that have this particular stone. And it is, um, you need to just check on the rating to see like how you're gonna use it. I find it, mine is a little harder. This one's as hard as a four. I don't think it's a 4.5. Um, and you'll notice like the different patterns. Again, those, those have a name. Uh, let's go over here to what I consider to be, when it comes to beauty, it's my favorite stone. Um, so this is the Maruyama um, this one has, has a long name, Tamagur, Tamagorio, Tamagurio, um, Suita Sunashi. Okay, so it has the logo on the side. It is not sealed. It has this beautiful pattern, which is in the name. It has a little bit of a chip right here. That's how it came. Like I said, it's not sealed. You can see the different, like when you look at the stones from the side, sometimes you can see like layering, layers. Yeah. <clears throat> so you'll notice again, big difference between sealed and not sealed. I've been told by everyone, I need to seal my stones. You do not soak these stones. If you take an unsealed stone and just leave it in water for a long time, it will crack. It will just literally, the, the layers of it will break apart. So sealing it helps to prevent the water from eroding the layers of stone and it falling apart. Okay, this is your 6,000 grit area. I'm going to say six to eight, but I'm just going to kind of leave, leave it at the six. So if you had to assign a grit, this is your six. You would call it a pre-finisher at that level. You could easily be done with your knife on this particular stone and be extremely happy. And this stone makes me happy. This is, this is my happy place. Um, and there's another, there's some more that make me happy. So 
the experts would be on here if we were live they'd be able to tell me <clears throat> i do not know where this stone goes so i'm going to change the order of this to talk about this this one has a unique pattern on top okay this crows i don't know what you call it. they 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 call it like crows it's not crow's feet, but it's a, it's a crow pattern in it. It's represented by these black marks. Okay, so this particular Aiwatani Karasu Sumanagashi. The Karasua, the Kara, Karasu, is the crow pattern. You will see that in different stones. This one in particular is not like the super sought after. The, some of the harder stones in this pattern are some of the most prized ones. The pattern itself does not necessarily make this stone perform better, but it is rarer, giving it a little bit more value. I have not used this stone to know where it goes in this lineup. It is not sealed. And my wife and I checked it earlier. It is not ground perfectly even. And what we mean by that is the top of this is flat. It is beautiful. Sorry, camera. But if I had this on a flat surface, one part of this is higher than the other. And so Actually, when I... if you lay it down on the counter, I can see it If I put it, it on before. the counter, you'll right, see it, 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 it kind of leans. And so when we flip it over... You see it, that angle right there, how it comes up on the left. Yep. So we would My have left. to grind this way to get this down to get it flatter, <clears throat> one of the imperfections that you can get. So if you're using a stone holder, you can use the stone holder to kind of set it in the stone holder level and put it in there tight enough that you won't notice it. But again, these are the types of things that can happen. Um, so let's continue on to this Copa piece, the one that's sealed. This was from Burnell Cutlery. Um, and this is Shobudani. Okay, so this particular Shobudani Awas Awasato, I believe, if I'm going to say this right, this has like a, a Nasiji pattern. It has like a, it might even have a Sumanagashi pattern. It has like a pear like pattern in there. So I'm not even going <laughs> to, I'm not even going to add another word to it. Um, but that, that particular pattern is got its own word and then again for those of you who are um experts they would be able to give it okay. more of a name this way yeah okay. Thank you. i will tell you from uh using a knife on this that cut off in this size has not hindered me in using it so if you're thinking about getting some of these buying some at this size uh don't let it don't let it stop you um save yourself some money before you really go down the rabbit hole question Sorry, that one is sealed. So how does that affect the use with this dirty? Okay, so know? my wife was asking how would the seal it being sealed affect? The, it is not sealed on top. Okay, so when you go to either, when, if, you, if you were to seal this on your own, and let's say you did it the old way, which is quite toxic actually, using the cashew lacquer, which is out of Japan, very hard to get. Um, then you would actually be sealing the side of this so when it's in water, uh, it's not breaking apart the layers. But there is no sealant on top of the stone, so that is not affecting the performance of the stone. I personally, and I think I've had it under here forever, literally, it's been sitting in this house for two years. Never been used. Water-based concrete sealer. I'm going to be like literally taping off with painter's tape the top of these stones and spraying layers of this not in my home. Disclaimer, do not put fumes of something like this in your house and breathe that in. Use something to protect your own breath, be in an outdoor open air environment, tape off the top of the stone where you're using the surface, spray this on the side, put multiple layers on it and then let it, you know, let each one seal. And then this will create a water resistant protectant over that. And this is the more modern answer to the cashew lacquer that I do not have available to me. Okay. Microphone popped off. These things happen. Hopefully.
hopefully I'm not making a whole lot of sounds for you guys and messing you up. So what's significant about the Shobudani particular stone, it is, it, it is the almost identical twin to the one that's the most coveted, which would be the Nakayama. Okay, the Nakayama, I'm going to jump over here. This is the Nakayama Tome, excuse me, this is the Nakayama Kaitia Tome. Or is this the Nasiji? I have two. I have two Nakayamas. Both have the word Tome. One has Nasiji, one is Kaitia. I think Tome is this one for the color. I will tell you they're both extremely hard. Okay, this one has some stamp, and then the person I bought it from had written a marker in English to, to say Nakayama Tome. Okay, so this one came with beautiful seals on top. This one's from my friend Jonathan. This is from a friend out of Sweden. A private collector who buys stones, uses them for a while, sees if he needs it, and sells it. I've gotten extremely amazing edges from both of these stones. This is more your traditional perfect shape without the impurities. Um, not quite as thick as some of the other ones. Not sealed. I don't know. Look at that, honey, and put your finger on that. That kind of has I mean, like a, a little bit of a. Sh I can see a little sheen. Yeah, I can't. It looks like it's maybe pseudo sealed, or it's just shiny on the side. There, now they can. See. I don't know if I would call that sealed or not. <clears throat> and then you have the other Nakayama, which is not as wide. Mm -hmm. I love both of these. Let me tell you what. Like, I these three. Love them. I mean, like, wow. Glad to have them. The rest, I'm still trying, trying to figure out their place. And I'll talk about that more in a second. But while we, we've got these three pieces of paper in front of you, and I have my cheat sheet to kind of let me know. I have never used them. So I do. I'm, this is going to be another adventure for me at some point. So what we have here is we have different finger stones. Finger stones are generally stones that are cut off of softer stones and they are used in some of the final finishes. And um, so taking a hammer and a chisel and breaking off these pieces, you have to take the time to flatten them. You and um, so what would happen is, is you would take a piece of sandpaper or say one of the lapping plates, you would add some water and you would take your finger and move it around on the lapping plate just to make sure that it's got like a perfectly level finish. Um, and then let's say you had your knife and you, you're at the end and you really want to uh, put um, different finishes on there. Okay, so people will say like Kasumi finish, that is a hazy gray finish. And so a lot of the knives you'll see that they have like a hazy gray from the spine to a point, and then the core steel that shine is like shinier. They can use these behind the sh the harder steel and make it hazy and get like a different finish. So again, finger stones generally come from much softer stones. These particular stones that were they were all sent to me by a, a great guy. He's a really he's a great knife polisher. <coughs> He makes some videos in the Facebook forums. Nick Kennedy was very kind. He gifted these to me. Um, so I'm very thankful to him for doing that. And I look forward to learning how to using them. He wrote down that these are unknown. Uh, he bought them thinking that they were for soft steel. He thinks that it's just too soft. Um, so we have those. We'll have play with this. So over here, I'm going to see if I can say this right. He wrote... I'm going to put this right here so we can see his handwriting. You'll understand that I think that's a U. So is that like Hazuya? Hazuya, I think. Okay, and so you can see in his notes that this is going to be used for hard steel. So that's going to be, um, maybe that's going to be more on like your core edge. But typically the harder steel is used on the edge of the blade. And then he wrote a greater sign. So he wants it to be less than, and then of course the number was cut off somehow. So we can see down here, we have the other stones. 
And then this is going to be the Jezuya. Am I saying that right? Jezuya. 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 And this is for the soft steel. And it needs to be Jezuya. what needs to be less than a point, three. Point three. Point three. And I am not exactly sure what that means when it says needs to be less than. Meaning I don't. We'll have some fun talking to Nick and learning all this. Rabbit hole. Like, imagine I've been working on these for a long time and you're getting what I know and I still know so little. Okay. So now let's talk about my experience as a knife sharpener real fast before we get into toning and polishing because this is, and we can finish the video today. I personally have not had great success sharpening knives on the coarsest knives. If you're a polisher, you would take a synthetic stone or if you're a sharpener, a synthetic stone and the sharpener would set the bevel. The polisher would make sure that the, the knife's like it's even so that all the low spots are taken care of. The high spots and the low spots are taken care of. Then when you've got that, you can come over here and you can start on your coarser stones. You might be starting in a mid grit. And then as you're sharpening, you're refining the edge and you're moving through a progression of stone. And I've had tremendous success. Very excited always to finish on the Japanese stone. Um, can I sharpen a knife equally sharp? I think yes. If you go on the JapaneseNaturalStone.com's website, it will say that the Japanese natural stones give you a better edge because the rocks, the particle sizes are uneven, so it gives you a toothier edge. Does toothier edge equate to sharper knife? I don't think so. It, it, it's a type of performance, especially cutting fatty food, tomato skin. Okay, teeth are known to break out of knives, making the edges durability less. So toothy edges make a certain level of sharpness does not necessarily mean that it will stay as sharp because they also say that the knife will stay sharper. Again, if teeth fall out, not quite as sharp. I believe that these stones last a long time. I believe if you're a knife sharpener, and once you buy the stones, you'll be good. If you're a knife polisher, no. So you have Damien in Croatia. This is what he does. He is an expert. I will let you know if he talks to you. He's very nice to share information. Uh, there's some loss in translation, and sometimes tone can seem not so nice. He is a nice guy. I have felt uh, like the tone didn't come across nice, but honestly, he has stayed with me. He has given me countless hours and been so nice, and I do want to praise him for that. He wants you to know, so he is available to you. Um, when he is sharp, when he is polishing knives and swords, his stones are not flat. He is the number one believer that stones do not need to be flat. And let me explain why. He will take and he will shear part of the stone down on one side so it's higher on the other. And when he puts the blade towards himself and goes away, he can push down and go away. And he's able to make a concave edge on a knife, which knives generally come concave. He believes a lot of times if you have a really flat stone and you're working on a knife's edge, you are making the edge straight when the blacksmith had made the edge concave. So if you're an expert like him, you're able to do what he can do. If you're not an expert, you're going to make the knife flat like me. And that's what we do. And do not be mad at yourself for that. Um, you can go in the forums, watch lots of videos. But typically for all of us, we believe in flat stones. I'm not going against Damon. I just, I'm not there. I'm nowhere near there. I can say it strongly. I know my strengths and weaknesses and I am not there. I am learning. And so I'm using these stones more regularly right now because I'm into knife polishing. Harder stones have a hard time getting a slurry. What's the big deal about a slurry? The slurry is the solution that has risen off of the stone that is water and particles of the stone. And that's what you're polishing the knife with. You are literally trapping particles of the stone in the moisture between the knife and the stone. And as you rub, that liquid sandpaper is taking scratch marks and making them more refined. And so softer stones get a slurry very easily. Harder stones need something like a diamond plate or a no no nagura. 
and you need to rub it for a while until you raise up a certain slurry. And then you have what's called slurry management. You can have too much slurry. You can have not enough slurry. There are reasons to use the knives on dry stones with hardly any water. Okay, so when I say welcome to the rabbit hole, you're going to have to just spend some money, buy them, learn from the forms like I did. Where does my stone go? And you might buy another identical stone and be like, I already have this stone and have to sell it. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, so we will give you more information and we will sharpen knives in a different video on these stones. There is a romantic feeling sharpening on something that the earth made. Can I make a knife equally sharp? I believe so on synthetic stones. Should you buy a natural stone? Man, if you got a little hippie in you and you got a little romance in you and you just are into Japanese culture and tradition, yes. If you're just a person who's geeked out on sharp edges, do you need to spend the money? I don't think so. I will do an experiment later to sharpen a knife, two identical knives, one on synthetic stones the best I can and one on, on the stones that I have and see if it produces the best edge and give you the results based on the stones I have. There might be better stones out there. Okay, so if you knew nothing, you now know something. If you knew more than me, then you know how little that I know. But I took a chance. Please be gentle with your comments. I'm asking that if you know more than me and correct me, please put that information nicely on there and we will share those comments with our viewers. Hopefully you guys will read the comments and educate yourself. I look forward to sharing more with you in time. Thank you for bearing through this particular video. I hope I represented it well. We'll see more of this stuff in the future. Friday nights at 8 o'clock. God bless.